What would the world look like if people felt like they mattered? Welcome to the Lead with Love podcast, exploring what it means to lead with love in business and life. I'm your host, Jada Selner, and in this show, I'll share meaningful conversations to help you, the creative, the entrepreneur, the world changer, reach more people, go after your dreams, and serve your community with love. I appreciate you joining me. Now let's get cozy and start today's episode. Have you ever questioned your productivity, your ambition, your energy levels, just feeling like you're too much or not enough? Have any of those questions or guilt swirl in your head as I'm raising my hand, then this episode is for you because I have a beautiful conversation with my personal friend and life coach, mindset coach, holistic approach to living and being human and messy, Rebecca McLaughlin. And Rebecca is a life coach. She helps ambitious women hone and balance their big energy into focused action and feminine flow. And as a certified life coach with a master's in counseling psychology, Rebecca is able to support her clients and myself included in doing the deep inner work needed to gain insight and free themselves from patterns of procrastination, self-sabotage, and burnout. Like I've literally had Rebecca sit with me in the office that I'm in right now that I rent to do my client calls and my podcast interviews. She has literally sat next to me when I was in resistance around creating my course, Build Your Child. Challenge. Uh, it is so hard for me to sometimes show up without another person on the other side of me. I really, I really flow and move and interact and engage in a way when there's there's someone listening and receiving. So when it's just a computer screen, I get really stuck. And I literally had her sit next to me and unpack where I was getting stuck, so I could move through and serve my community in a way that I can't, if I'm not constantly coaching, you know, my time and resources are limited in that way. So she really can do it all, hold it all. And I'm just excited to share some of the practical tools and life strategies of just being a woman in the world who has big ambitions, but also wants to have compassion and space and grace for how we show up in the world, the highs and the lows. And through her skilled questioning and deep listening, people not only experience more success and ease in their business, but also create more joy and meaning in their whole life. And isn't that what we're all here for? Yes, yes, yes. So now let's get cozy with Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Jada Love. <laughs> this is so fun. I'm just because we talk to each other so much. Um, yes. <laughs> and I was trying to think of when was the like exact moment when we first met. I know that Sarah Jenks was the one that connected us to each other, but do you remember when we first like met in person? Was it one of her parties or gatherings? Probably, right? I feel like we just had so many like lovely snuggly conversations up on her couch. I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember. Yeah. I'm like, was it like, it could have been a photo shoot. It could have just been a gathering of, of meals, which I think yeah. Sarah is really, really good at. And I actually remember, you know, I first hired you, I think it was in, might've been 2014, like right before, either mm-hmm. right before, or right after I did WGS and yep. hiring to do basically an interior design coaching intensive in my home. Yeah. And I just remember like you sharing about the clutter, like if there's like clutter around your home, then there's also like clutter in your mind. And uh, you just like held me to the fire Mm -hmm. of like, it's like um, some (laughs) things felt easy to get rid of. And I was like, yay, yay, this is fun. And then there were things that were like really hard and smaller. (laughs) Yeah. And like, and you were like, I know you're tired, but this is the stuff that we have to do. (laughs) 
<laughs> the stuff that you've been avoiding. And I just, I just love that mm. about you mm. and like really just like noticing when things get uncomfortable or when we're comfortable mm-hmm. and kind of, I feel like you just have a beautiful dance of knowing when to like, mm-hmm. just push a little bit more and when to like ease off and, and create some space. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that was way back when and so fun. I mean, I remember that that day so well, you know, going through those closet and your hall closet and, you know, all those fun little nooks that we all have in our homes. Yeah. And just creating more mm-hmm. space to bring in things that really like things that I love. And um, yeah. I feel like I've really taken that with me even years, years later of like, oh, this is a nasty little rag. I'm just going to throw this out and buy something. Like I don't need it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So life is gone. Yeah. And I definitely want to talk about just the work that we've done in a deeper way beyond that. But first I would love to just ask you, what does leading with love mean to you and how do you put love into practice in your work and your life and just anything that comes up for you? Mm, Yeah, it's such a beautiful question. So I think leading with love really starts with, for me, my relationship to myself. I really feel like how I am treating myself with love, how I'm in relationship with myself, how I'm taking care of myself, really is the kind of foundational piece to being able to be in relationship and serve and lead other people whether that be my family, my partnership, my clients, whatever aspect and wherever that goes. But for me, leading with love starts with, you know, basically being in a practice of self-love and not just the trendy kind, but like the deep discipline and showing up and being attuned to myself. So that's the first part. And then I think in my work, I mean, first of all, I don't really work with clients who I don't love or I can't fall in love with pretty quickly. (laughs) It's kind of like a prerequisite for me now that I feel like it's an important piece, especially in the work that I do because it's a coaching relationship. It's deep that I really find that if I'm not really showing up and able to be fully in love and love, you know, this person, maybe not in love, but love my client, I don't open in the way I don't show up. I don't, um, you know, it, or what it allows me to do is just to be fully in that relationship. So I always say when I take on a client, it's like you're in my aura now, you're in my circle and you're in a circle that I, you know, am committed to energetically and from my heart. So that's the first part. And then, you know, the deeper level of leading with love in my work is working specifically with my clients and holding the vision of their greatness and their most highest potential for themselves and whatever that may be while also like holding this really vast expansive compassionate place for their messy humanness (laughs) on the way to that place (laughs) and the up and down journey to get there so yeah I think it's just about being able to be with people in their shiniest glitteriest glowy moments and also when everything is tender and vulnerable and messy and you know not their most proud and I find that to be such a place of deep reverence love and an act of love and an honor to be you know in relationships at that level with people yeah and you know I actually we've been working in like you've been my life coach in my corner since I was, you know, in the process of signing my contract to sell my half of simple green smoothies. And it was an emotional roller coaster of dealing with contracts and my own worthiness and yes, the human mess of it all. And then I think about, you know, over two years later and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm still human and I'm still messy. And all of those parts like that never goes away and I think so often we're looking for this like this bullet 
foolproof solution of like solve all the things when it's actually just like we're in it and to be held. And I just love that reverence and love that you hold for Mm -hmm. your clients. And I feel that Mm -hmm. as a client. And I'm curious if there were times, like how did you know to create that boundary and love around like I'm only going to work with clients that I can fall in love with quickly or to be in that space Mm because I I understand Mm -hmm. that dance for sure yeah well first of all I think it's one of the reasons I ended in coaching I'm trained as a therapist I'm licensed as a therapist but I don't do therapy and one of the reasons was because I couldn't navigate in therapy and in traditional school therapy they teach you like you need to hold this boundary like you know and it it felt very like a boundary of love like you can't have a personal investment or you know and of course I don't take personal investments in my clients but it blocked my heart it blocked this real authentic connection of being with one another and I didn't like it (laughs) and I felt really kind of like I don't know what to do and there were other reasons I moved to coaching but yeah I think the way I I learned about it was really by doing it and realizing that when I open my heart, one, it's that much more like rewarding and inspiring for me. And my clients had so much more growth because it also held this sense of reverence and respect and love that isn't me like jumping in to save them, but actually in their own wholeness. I'm holding them in the vision of their wholeness and it encourages them to step forward into themselves and to take responsibility for themselves, which is ultimately the greatest act we can do as humans and sometimes the hardest. Yeah. So I think I learned to do it by doing it with clients and, you know, probably the opposite way by, you know, clients, I just, it didn't work. I couldn't open my heart. It wasn't the right fit and it never felt in flow. And, you know, I learned and I have learned that if that's where we are, that it's better to, to send them out or make referral so that they can actually be in a relationship that's supportive and full of love. Mm. And one thing that, you know, I struggled with, and, and I think that I still do, you know, really unhooking a lot of my identity being wrapped up in the success of business and just in work and all of those things. And I remember you giving me, you know, a tool of like when I would get triggered or to just Mm -hmm. light a candle and send love in all the different directions. I'm, I'm just curious, just from your experience on what you've observed and witnessed in people kind of hooking themselves into their worthiness, their identity around their work and success or failures and all those pieces. I know it's a big question. I feel like you can hold it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, hooking our worthiness into our accolades, into our things, into our, you know, it's, it's an epidemic in our culture right now. It's, it's what our culture tells us will give us happiness, will give us success, will give us all the things we want, you know, and it doesn't, you know, I mean, you talk to top CEOs here, this, that, you know, all the money, all the success, all of that without actually a grounded sense of self and a connection to a deeper meaning and a sense of joy and love, you're without anything. Right. And so it doesn't matter what you do or what you have, your worthiness is connected to actually who you are and how you arrive and how you live rather than what you do. And yeah, I think that is something also, though, that we need to be incredibly gentle with ourselves around, right? Because like I said, I think it's a cultural epidemic at the moment, but it's also, it's a tough one because we learn it in childhood too, you know? I mean, many of us were raised wanting to impress or prove something to our parents and we were patterned or we were conditioned in that way. And so, you know, it's understandable to expect that we are going to you know, find these times where we feel this catch between, oh, I really want, and to have a practice to unattach, to remember who we are, to remember where our worthiness lies, and to return back to that 
and I love that practice of lighting a candle because when we light a candle and we just really connect again, it's like, it's like feeling that circle of humanity. Like we are all connected. We are all individual, but we are all connected. And, you know, we're just on this journey together. Yeah. So does that answer kind of? Yes, totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a loopy loopy, but it's a, that's a big question. You know, it's yeah. an ex- existential question too. Yeah. And I, and you know, I think that's, you know, me with love over metrics of like finding my own grounding in that of how as much as I love leading with love and how I've, I've built businesses that there is still this external validation that I like or enjoy or still lean on around numbers and credibility and all of those pieces that it's something that we can get caught up in and forget the why and like what you said like the deeper meaning of life and just bringing that joy and simplicity and being able to say no and create more space to just be present with what is and so it's been very helpful for me to have you as that mirror to kind of hold up of like, oh, this isn't about all of that. <laughs> like it's, it's about the essence and the energy that you bring to the world, to your life. And I just always really appreciate that reminder because sometimes even I forget, we all forget. Absolutely. Yeah. We spin off this way. We spin off that way. And it's, it's a coming back to that why and what really matters and why you started in the first place. Right. Yeah. And something, a conversation that I love so much about the work that you do and why I brought you on to be the resident life coach around mindset and (laughs) accountability for the love over Mm -hmm. metrics incubator is that you talk about big energy women. And this mm-hmm. piece, like I, you know, I got to experience just that conversation re- reflection for you in our personal one-on-one calls. But I know that you should, I, I would just love for you to just tell me about big energy women. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell me about us, you mean? Yes. Um, <laughs> tell, so let's talk about us. Yeah. Yes. No, I think to me, you know, I first, kind of started to learn about big energy women because I'm a big energy woman. And to be a big energy woman, I think we are visionary. We are expansive. We can get stuff done when we put our minds to it. We have goals. We're ambitious. And the shadow side of being big energy is that we tend to burn out sometimes. We have a harder time um, keeping a balance or a rhythm, figuring out a rhythm for our flow of energy. We can be a bit, a little bit disorganized. We don't like the mundane things, you know, so there's these like other areas of life that we struggle in. And I think that the biggest journey of learning and starting to kind of coin this term big energy woman for me has really been about accepting my own big energy and learning to work with it and utilize it and vitalize it, if that's even a word, to its fullest potential, right? And that means that I actually really tend to go against the grade of the way our, you know, pretty masculine culture talks about productivity. You know, I'm productive in a different way. I like, you know, intensive spurts of time and then big, you know, restful pieces where I need to like, zone out. And for a long time, I judged myself. I said that I should be a different way. I should be the type of person, you know, like my husband who does a little bit every single day and really, you know, learning to appreciate and own myself as a big energy woman has been like figuring out the nuances of that and starting to build my life from the energetic rhythm that works for me and where I am most efficient, productive, loving, joyful, alive. And as I gave myself permission to do it, it just has opened up so much flow in my life, really. And for the clients that I work with, yourself and your your women included, I think it does the same. When we take back that power to say, no, I get to actually say how I'm productive and give ourselves that like deep permission that it's okay. It is amazing what happens. Yeah. And I, I've definitely experienced that. Like there are moments when you're like, okay, 
you're going to go in your office, you're going to watch a show on Netflix or Hulu and just yeah. like rebel and rest and just, yeah. and, and be a little like sneaky and like, you know, like, and yeah. that is actually part of my work <laughs> is to just exactly. edge and not, you know, because so I think that there's this conversation of like, well, you know, we all have 24 hours in a day and mm -hmm. if you're watching shows, then you're not productive and you're wasting time. But I think what I've learned from you around that term that you've shared with me of big energy women is that we have these like high productive outputs and flow. And then yeah. we have a bit of a, a crash where we just need to just be. And there's moments where I'm not watching any shows at all. Yeah. Um, and then there's yeah. moments when I'm like, I'm binging right. <laughs> like going right. there because that's like what my energy is in that moment. And to not think that yeah. I'm not being productive overall. Yeah. Well, I think one of the gifts of big energy women is that we can show up with big energy and we do. And so when you show up, you know, at a retreat or you do things, right, whatever it is that you're doing, you write a book, you do this, you meet a coach. When we show up, we show up. <laughs> and it's kind of like the analogy is like, put me on the field coach and you don't know how you score a goal, but you score a goal every time, right? It's somehow there's an attunement. There's an, there's a skill that big energy women have where they show up with their whole self, but they exude an immense amount of energy. So when you do that, you use up a lot of energy, which is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. It's part of your zone of genius, but learning how to actually really restore that and being really realistic and supportive about how we actually look at our calendars and our plans so that that is in there is what creates, you know, like a slower burnout. And, you know, burnout sometimes is just inevitable. It's like when you put it all out there, you know, you're going to be burned out for a while. So be burned out and build back up, you know, but just don't be burned out and be judging ourselves. I think that's, to me, the pivotal piece is like really owning how we need to restore ourselves and that rest is essential. Yeah. And I just have this image, like if I think about I love candles so much, <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. but they burn out. They the you light the candle, yeah. there's that light and the fire, and and then it gets to the bottom, and the wick is like I'm done, and then you just yeah. refill the candle with more wax, right? Like you just fill it back up, and then you burn it again, and so and but you don't like Beautiful. keep getting like another can, like you know you kind of have to refill it. So yeah, that's just like the image yeah. that's coming for me as, as I think about that and visualize that. Yeah. And, I'm and if you even take it like goofily, sorry, to, yeah. like to a tangible place, it takes time to fill the candle. Like you got to go to the store and get new wax and figure out, you know, usually it takes a few weeks to refill a candle, you know, and so it takes some time. Yeah. I'm just so, recharging. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I think, you know, my husband is similar where he's like, he checks all the boxes on a daily basis and he's just living his best, most optimal life. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm curious, what's the conversation now that you've had this clarity around big energy women? Like, how do you have that conversation with your husband or like, what do you invite clients to share with, with their own partners when you realize, oh yeah. I am a big energy woman and like I have these, I'm on and then I have to like mm -hmm. go back, restore and replenish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think the first step as always is to really actually validate ourselves in it. Right. So we get nervous about, you know, talking to our partners, usually when we haven't cleaned up our side of the street, as far as feeling really confident and secure and whole in who we are. But when you're in that place, it's really just coming to your partner and being honest and saying, here's the truth of how I am, you know, how I work, how I live. And it is different. And, you know, my husband and I, we have to have this conversation all the time because <laughs> I forget and he forgets, you know, and so, you know, and bless his heart when he wants to help me or if I'm like, oh, I need to like do things or this, you know, I'm behind in this project or whatever, instead of being like, okay, sweetheart, let's sit down and figure out like what you need to restore and then how to like craft your schedule. So you can just go all in for that. 
he's, you know, he always comes back to his solution plan, which actually is what works for him, which is if you just did a little bit each day, you know, and I'm like, Ugh, that's just so not me. So I think it's just having courageous, beautiful conversations, you know, opening up, sharing how you are, who you are, how you can support one another. You know, my husband has definitely learned and also learned that if it doesn't make sense to him and I'm going to go ahead with a way of doing something that he's like, great, you know, and to him, if I am really following my flow, I'm always a way happier person, a way happier wife, a better mother. And that only benefits him. Yeah. So I think taking that inspiration, you know, but the first piece is actually doing the deeper work of getting into validation and acceptance with yourself around it. Yeah. And talking about validation, one thing that I love that you shared at our last retreat was about vitamin V, which I love <laughs> so much. Um, yeah. so if you can tell me a little bit more about vitamin V and what that means. Yeah. Good old vitamin V. It stands for vitamin validation. <laughs> Something that I believe is essential for all humans. And that somewhere along the line, many of us get a really skewed perspective that like wanting validation is wrong or, but then we actually secretly want it all the time <laughs> from other people. But what we don't actually learn to do, and this goes back to putting our worthiness, like that pattern of putting our worthiness into other people's hands or our work or whatever it may be is we don't learn a practice of self-validation and really acknowledging and looking to ourselves and giving ourselves the acknowledgement, the kudos, the validation that we are so like secretly hoping we get from the world, from our partner, from our children, whoever it may be. And so I always say such a beautiful practice is like all the ways, all the things that you want your clients to say to you, or you want your to happen into your business, or, you know, you want your husband to say to you, say it to yourself. You know, many times what needs to be said is not what someone needs to say to you, but it's what you need to say to yourself. And that is the practice of taking your vitamin B every day and really honoring. And, and there's a lot of different ways you can do that. There's, you can put that into a tangible practice, you know, However, it may be for me right now, I have a little like heart right by my stove. And so when I'm cooking, it reminds me to give myself vitamin B. So I'll be like chopping vegetables and thinking and validating myself for, you know, the ways I'm showing up as a mother and, and all the things I'm doing right and well in the world. It's so easy. Our brains are so programmed to focus on the negative rather than to really acknowledge and validate the positive. Mm. And I know there's one, was it Pebbles? You got the whole, our Lomis. Yeah. <laughs> Over metrics, like they're, they've got they their vitamin and <laughs> Can you tell yeah. me about like Yeah. That? So that's, that kind of came out of one of the coaching calls, but it, it was great. Like, I think I just suggested getting a jar, like a mason jar or something, and you can get those really pretty, you know, pebbles or rocks or anything. And every day, you know, you throw a few as your vitamin D and you acknowledge them, what you're doing, and you put a few more in your jar. You can also do this with pieces of paper. You can have a vitamin D box, right? And so you're writing down like validation. And then on those days where you're like, oh, what did I do today? Or I'm not enough or those things. You go to your box and you can pull out the paper and remind yourself of who you are and your inherent worthiness and all the things that you are doing. And I love this approach so much more than when I think about like in my five minute journal, there's affirmations and I mm -hmm. feel like I'm putting like a wish list down of like, I am focused. I am mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. I am, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like, it's like this wish yeah. list of things that I like, I'm not feeling in the moment, but I want to feel 
at some point today right. versus like, oh, right. this is who I am right now that I can mm-hmm. validate and affirm in this moment versus an affirmation of what I want to be. It's like, this is who I already am. And it's something that I've helped Zoe with of her learning to praise herself of, of, you know, she's like, mommy, what, what do you think of this? And I'm like, what do you think, you know, to get her to yeah. think for herself, to validate herself first. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, anytime I think about all the great things that I parent Zoe, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to just like reflect that right back and do it for myself because totally. it is something that we are constantly looking for that external praise. And if we can start mm-hmm. validating ourselves and I love thinking of it, not just from our clients, but also like, what do we want our partners to say about us that they didn't mm-hmm. see or didn't acknowledge that we can start acknowledging ourselves of how awesome we are. Yeah. Yeah. And often when we're, in a practice of doing it for ourselves, we actually receive validations we get from other people. And that energy restores us in a way different way than if we were like starving for it, right? Mm -hmm. It just becomes this like glistening icing on the top, rather than like, tell me, tell me. And actually, because if you're at a deficit of your vitamin B, you know, when someone gives you, you know, a source of validation or says something, often you don't hear it because it's, there's no place for it to land. And so, you know, I can remember going through periods with my husband like this. I mean, not I can remember, I do go through periods, with my, you know, where I'll be like, I want you to say this to me. And he's like, honey, I said that to you like five times last week. You didn't hear me. And I was like, oh, and I always like, oh, thank you. Okay, sign. Need to actually go say that to myself so that I can actually receive and hear it when it comes from other people. Yeah. And I know that you did this work pre-motherhood and now you have two mm-hmm. little ones. Yes, I and do. I'm, <laughs> I'm curious if you had any fears or hesitations on growing a family when you already had a thriving practice in place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was like, oh, okay. My business was like really kind of, I wouldn't say like fully taking off, but it had like gotten to this stable place. And I knew intuitively that I was willing to be changed by motherhood. So that was going to change everything about me and my whole life. And it did, you know, when I had my son, he was also sick when he was born. So I think that also helped me kind of like create very clear boundaries or just decisions about work. I really pulled back significantly and, you know, mostly because I needed to be with him, you know, in the hospital for a long time. And then I needed a long time after that to actually heal and restore myself from, you know, the traumatic birth that he had. And even though we navigated it beautifully and he's perfectly great now, but yeah, I think, There was these moments where I was like, oh, you know, I was watching friends, businesses grow and go out there and they were doing these things. And I was on this pullback. I was on this, you know, not decline, but just this real slowing down. I wasn't going to be blogging and doing all the things that I did. And then slowly, you know, I started to come back. I started to shift my business. I used to do more what I called interior coaching in people's homes, as you mentioned in the beginning of the call, like working with clutter and creating visions and using the metaphor that your home represents what's going on inside. And I still do some of that, but it started to evolve to more of life coaching. And, you know, it just allowed for more ease of connecting with clients. And, you know, that was really the place I was in at that point and where I was moving. And then again, when my daughter was born, you know, it was a similar slowdown. And I just really had to trust the rhythms of this and trust that, you know, my worth, my work is not correlated in its worthiness by how big my business is. But actually, to me, it's more about like, how deeply I'm connecting and serving my clients. And right now, that's just working one on one with clients and doing, you know, your program and doing a few other things and a few retreats here and there. And I love it. And that's plenty because another big part of my work right now is being a mother and being a mom. And that's, you know, a very clear priority in my life that that just came over me 
when I was pregnant with my son and I knew it would, but of course there's like that lingering babble and yet I've just had to be like, it's enough. It's enough. And I'm in this for the long haul. Like I want to work. I want to serve for my whole life. And there's going to be seasons and rhythms, just like my big energy says of what that will look like. And right now, you know, it's small scale, but to me, just as impactful. Yeah. And was, there, was there, it's so impactful. <laughs> and, and, and I can really resonate and relate with the seasons. And sometimes it's not even about motherhood. Like they're, they're, and I, I think that's one of your superpowers is, is really holding people through big life transitions. Sometimes yeah. it's becoming a new mama. Sometimes it's yeah. selling a business. And sometimes it's just getting really clear of like, oh, in this season of my life, it's not about bigness and expansion, but yeah. pulling that big expansive energy into creation. Like I feel like that's the season I'm in right now of like, I really want to write this book. I really yeah. want to create this planner. And so I say no to more opportunities, mm -hmm. bigger speaking events and things like that. I'm curious mm -hmm. if there was anything that you did to get to that place of trusting the season that you're in. Anything I did. I mean, I think it goes back to, again, leading with love. It was being in a deep relationship with myself and continuing to attune to when I was starting to feel like, you know, eh, not good enough. Oh, you know, and to get support around that when I needed it to purge that, to set like, you know, line in the sand, like I'm not doing that. No. But I think for me, and one of the reasons I think I'm a coach is because I've benefited so much from coaching, right? When you're struggling, especially big energy women, we tend to be, I mean, I don't want to like box us in, but like we tend to be verbal processors, right? Yeah. So we, when we can have the space in the container to be heard, seen and validated in a loving relationship that, you know, Sometimes it can work in your partnership or a friendship, but sometimes it's great to have a coach to support you to like, it's like you can just like dump your brain and then make sense of it right? and yeah. create a clear and grounded plan of action that is totally in alignment with what's most important for right now. And to me, that's what a coaching relationship that you, you know, invest in ongoing that's like the unique investment and the benefit that you get is that you get traction and you get groundedness and focus. And what you get back is this sense of being really alive and present in your life rather than living your life in your head or living your life on your to-do list or living your life in your unworthiness. Mm. Yeah. And I, I know you mentioned groundedness and mm -hmm. for big energy women, including myself, including my clients, I know that time feels like such a limited resource. There's this feeling of overwhelm or distraction or tiredness and just feeling like everyone wants a piece of you in, in so many different mm -hmm. directions. Are there any rituals that you have, especially with, you know, being a mama and like privacy and time is like even more of like location. Totally. There's so many more people in your space too, but any rituals that help you get grounded? Yeah. So I think the biggest one is to just, I mean, it's the no brainer. It's, it seems so simple, but to pause, like the, the great pause is what I call it. You know, just pause, breathe, round, open, connect. And, you know, if I'm having trouble doing that in a moment, you know, sometimes I have to do it at the park <laughs> or on a call or wherever you are. And it's really, it's a practice of getting present, but sometimes we need, you know, a little support to get there. So lighting a candle is a beautiful ritual, writing in your journal. I mean, it's the basics that we know about in our relationship to ourselves and the ways to take care of us are basics because they actually work. Right. And what it is, is it's, it's tapping in and it's attuning to what's happening in your system. So, you know, one thing that I do with my clients, do with you, I do with your women is we do a visualization where we check in 
with our emotional self, our intellect, our body, and our kind of creative higher self or your spirit or your soul. And you get wisdom about what's really going on. And to me, that can be done very quickly or more expansively, but it will inform what's needed for you to ground and to get back into the right action, really. So, I mean, it doesn't sound very fancy, but the great cause, like pause, pause, slow down, feel yourself in your body, connect, expand. And there's always, when you deeply attune to your own heart in that way, you will always be in a better place than when you started. Yeah. And I think that that pause of sometimes you need that external accountability to make Mm -hmm. sure it happens or to build that rhythm and that ritual and practice over time. Cause it's like, Oh yeah. yeah. Like I'm like in my life doing my life. I'm like, Oh, if I get a call with Rebecca, I know there's going to be a pause. I know there's going to be a moment to breathe and to take inventory of of what's happening in all the different parts of me, which I think has been really, really helpful to really allow those parts to slow down because it's like, we know what we should do, but there's something we don't do it. Yeah. There's something so much easier to do it with somebody else. Yeah. And even for someone to just tell you what to do, you know, at the end of the call, like the end of our last call, my struggle right now, or like awareness around my weight and of that just like oh my body is expanding a lot more Mm -hmm. and there's a lot more extra comfort Mm -hmm. and cushion Mm -hmm. and that knowing that I'm that my body doesn't want to push it doesn't want to be in a highly Mm -hmm. intensive movement class or have restriction in what I eat it just like I know that that is not the season that my body my heart is in and I remember you just saying like just do some embodied practices to just get you back in to feeling your body, to feeling senses. And it was like such a different invitation. I was like, oh yeah. So that's my fine dance class. That's lighting a candle because I can smell it. That's getting in a hot tub or, you know, a hot bath and just, you know, standing in the sun and feeling the sun just like hit my body and the warmth of the sun of just Mm -hmm. like waking up and remembering Mm -hmm. that we can feel those pieces. Right. 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 And the practice of you, you know, in our conversation and you inviting yourself and actually giving yourself the gift really of taking that pause, attuning to this part of you, right. It started as, Ugh, I don't feel good in my body. I don't know what to do. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that, but I don't know what to do. And it slowly, as we attuned to it, as we worked with it, as we listened to it, you know, gave way to this invitation to like, Oh yeah, that would feel really good. I want to do that. Right. So it's, it is that practice of sorting its way through and whether we attune to ourselves or we do it with a coach or a friend or a journal, it's just the practice of being in relationship with ourselves. And yeah, I mean, if I had a, if I had a dollar for every time a client has showed up at a call and been like, I was going to cancel because I don't really know if there's anything I need to, you know, there, I don't really feel anything. And then we like check in and there's like a world of information <laughs> that they have. And then they get off the call like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I made this call and I showed up. And, and what usually, you know, sparked them is that they had this little inkling, like, just go, it'll be okay, you know, and, and I know that feeling too. And so yeah, in many ways, I always tell my clients, I'm like, you know, you investing and you having me in your corner is a gift to yourself. And, you know, I mean, I bring what I bring, but I'm really a space holder for you to do your work. And our relationship will support you in moving in the direction that you want rather than feeling stuck or, you know, wherever you are. Yeah, yeah, it's so beautiful. And Are there anything, like something that else that you've really helped me with is when I've coined like what I learned when we were on a call together was that I had a faux to-do list where like we literally went through, you know, my Mm to-do list and my Trello and, you know, things Mm -hmm. that were scattered around post-its and you really just kind of like basically had me say them 
out loud mm-hmm. what was on my list. And then mm-hmm. I was like, that's silly. That's not real. Mm-hmm. That's not important. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. but it was just, again, that verbal processor for big energy women, right? That you have uh-huh. that you shared. Just curious, like when people feel that overwhelm around their to-do list and needing or wanting to get into focused action. And I think that's your superpower is getting ambitious women into focused action and feminine flow. What are some practical tools or strategies to kind of move from that long, never ending to-do list? I think the biggest thing is to like step out of basically just like arriving at your to-do list and actually to create a a ritual of like relationship with your to-do list and a planning session for your to-do list. So that means you set a time in your calendar somewhere where, you know, you either do it with yourself at a fancy coffee shop that you love, or you do it on the phone with a coach or you do it with a friend side by side, but basically you sit down and you look at it and you pull out each piece and you say, okay, what's the deal with this? And what are the steps and why is this here? And it's kind of like, it's a way of taking stock, getting organized, but also like really sifting through what's most important and what's essential because things sneak onto our to-do list that hold energetic mental space that is really, really depleting in many ways. (laughs) And we'll just like leave it on there because you know, oh, it needs to get done. But if we really have a practice of pulling forward what is most essential and creating a boundary with what is not, we get all this free, like, energy back, (laughs) right? And we get all this focus back. So I would say instead of, like, sliding into your Monday morning, you know, and checking, like, letting your to-do list set up your week, you set up your week you know, and bring your to-do list in. Does that make sense? So you are in the power seat, you're in the driver's seat versus your to-do list is like happening to you. Mm, Yeah. And it has such great parallels to even the decluttering of your home, right? Of like, what's really meaningful, what's really essential. And we create all these should of like, well, I want to get this done before I leave for blah, 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 you know, like for the next trip yeah. or vacation. And it's like, really, do you really need to do that before you, right. you know, we like create just this, like we have to do this and we created that yeah. ourselves. And so I just mm-hmm. love that practice. And also even in our calls of just being able to be like, do you really want, is this a season that you really want to do those, those tasks right now? Mm-hmm. And I'm no, not really, but right. I feel like I should, or I have, you know, and then I'm able to just kind of like mm-hmm. remove it again, that like, mm-hmm. this is uncomfortable. I'm holding on. I don't want to, but it's just like mm-hmm. really looking at that and, and connecting to that. So I just appreciate yeah. practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's even just categorizing things together. Like I think sometimes it's like pulling together the smaller mundane you know, thoughtless tasks. And if you can pull them together, group them, and then set a time for them, it's easier to get that done versus like doing a big item, a small item, a big item. And I think like categorizing things and then realizing there are some of those like hot things that have an emotional attachment and you're going to need to tend to them and probably talk them through. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, Ooh, I have another call to schedule with Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Always a joy. Always a joy. Yeah. I love, you know, the work I get to do is so awesome because it could be like literally doing like the teeniest, like, let's talk about your to-do list, you know, to like the deepest emotional work. And so we run the gamut and, but I think it's so good. And I think one of your superpowers too, that I have learned is the permission for handholding when we need it, that it's okay to have a call with somebody or to like be call a friend and be like, I need to talk through this thing that just, you know, it seems so simple, but it's driving me crazy and I can't get out of my own head. And that's a sign that something else is going on. There's a thing on there that you need to process or something else is going on. Right. And I think we have, you know, really a message of shame about, you know, someone holding our hand or creating accountability through it. And I just want to like lift that, let us get the help we need to be our big energy to do the things we need to do so that we can get out of our own way, right? And live rather than being like, oh, we should be able to do this for ourselves. Yeah, 
And I think that the cue is when you're facing resistance. Like that was the word that yeah. was coming up for me. It's like, oh, what am mm-hmm. I resisting right now? What do I kind of keep putting off and off and off? And it's like, oh yeah, it's time to process that in a deeper way to see what's really underneath the resistance because the thing that we think it is, it actually is. Totally. And then we're beating ourselves up. Yep. Because like I should just be able to do this, but there's something deeper. There's another layer underneath that. And I'm like, yep. I have a call with Rebecca now. So, <laughs> so that's that, totally it. Like, right. You know, people really diving into asking, like, what am I resisting right now? And mm-hmm. if you keep feeling like it's coming up, it's coming up, and you're not quite moving through it, you're feeling stuck, that that's a really great time to reach out for help and get that accountability, that support, that verbal processing, space holding, whatever it is that you need to get underneath why you're actually not doing it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Or anything big is not working in your life, right? Like those are good times too when things are like, not flowing um, or you feel like you're getting in your own way or you're just like hitting a a wall in some way to me like that's time like get support and however you get it but you don't have to do it alone and particularly if you identify as this big energy woman like you know we can't do it alone so we're not meant to and part of it is because our big energy is highly highly feminine and feminine you know we are connectors and we thrive, you know, it's like the redwoods who have the big roots and they, they grow in a circle with their roots all connected and that's how they can grow so big and magnificent. So to realize that, you know, when you see a big, shiny, big energy woman out there doing amazing things, she has a network of support beneath her or she wouldn't be able to do it. Yes. Oh, I love that visual so much. So before we wrap up, I'd love to know, What's your why right now? What's the vision that you are moving towards? Hmm. Let's see. What is my why? Well, I think my, I mean, to be honest, my current deepest why is being my best self so that I can show up as the most present and loving mother as I can really is my deepest why. And what is so wonderful for that is that that journey and that education in many ways and the ways that my children are teaching me is making me so much more like is giving me so much more wisdom through the work it's requiring me to do on myself. And so that is my why, which I think informs and kind of branches out into ways that I'm able to show up for my clients, wisdom that I have to share and just the joy that these little beings that I have in my life right now are reminding me to bring forward in myself and to participate and that life is inherently like bubbly and bright and joyful, but that it's also, there's a continuum, right? You know, I have a four-year-old right now and he is like all over the map with his emotions. And I mean, it is such a study of human it's mm-hmm. human development it's like he is just all in his like beautiful humanness every day and so by witnessing that I get to actually grace it within myself and my everyone I know so what I think it really does is it deepens my ability to have compassion which is really I think my greatest why to when we can have compassion we live in a more loving world. Mm, And I love that you shared about that invitation to participate because I'm always sipping on some hot tea (laughs) when I'm having these conversations. Mm -hmm. And it just made me think of the quote that is on my my tea bag right now, which is life Mm. is a flow of love. Your participation is requested. Yeah. Ooh, I just got chills. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. it. That's so before it. we say goodbye, is there anything else you'd love to share? And you could feel complete right now, or there might be something just tingling, tugging at your heart. No, I think I think I feel complete. I'm so grateful for you. I just adore you and the work that you do. And 
I just resonate so much with this idea of leading with love and that it is, it's quite, you know, deep in its roots. And it's, it's really of service to all of us to consider for not only our businesses, but our whole life. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah, thank you. And it's been such an amazing journey to have you as a light in my corner and a mirror. And if people want to learn more about your work, where can they find you? So they can find more about my coaching work at RebeccaMcLaughlinCoaching.com. Awesome. And there's a fuller website coming there, but you can contact me. There's a way to contact me through there. Sweet. I'll link to it in the show notes. And I just love you so much. I love you too, honey. You're so welcome. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for your heart and attention in listening to Lead with Love. If this message, Leading with Love, and life and business, and remembering the humans and beating hearts, behind the numbers and all of that good stuff, I would love for you to take the time to leave an honest review. It would mean the world to me and it also helps more people find out about the goodness and helping spreading more love in the world, which we really, really need. So I would really appreciate that and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.